It's another Tonight Show with your host, Ben Kaiser. With special guests. Boise, Idaho, in Studio 115, it's your host, Ben Kaiser! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tonight we have a great show for you. My two guests are both professionals here in the local Boise State area and have come on the show to talk to us a little bit about what they do. My first guest, you might recognize him as an instructor here at Boise State, Camp, or at Boise State University, and maybe even from the heavens above, it's former astronaut Steve Swanson. Steve. Thank you for being on the show. My How are you pleasure. doing? Today? I'm doing great, thank you. Great, great. Um, I think astronaut is not something that, you know, you encounter too often, right? I think you might actually even be the first and only one that I've ever met. Um, you, you know, need to get out more. I need to get out more. <laughs> so how does, how does someone find themselves in the spot of becoming an astronaut? What, what, what was a little bit of your journey? How did you, how did you get there? Yeah, it's not an easy journey, as you can mm -hmm. imagine. There's uh, quite a bit of competition for that spot. And so for me, it started when I was 25 and that's when I came up with the idea of wanting to be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. And so I just finished a master's and so I applied to NASA and got rejected right away. Nice. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but so I, uh, they were nice enough and, and they offered me a job uh, in a different area, an engineering job. Mm -hmm. And so I ended still, up- Still working for NASA, still but not working as for the NASA, astronaut, okay. An astronaut. And it was really a, a great job for me. I didn't even know it existed. It was uh, working on this airborne simulator of the space shuttle. And uh, I got to do the software on it, then I got to learn how to fly mm -hmm. and do all these kind of things. So for me, it was a better special job I could have ever gotten, you know. Did that, did that kind of almost say, hey, maybe I don't want to be an astronaut now. Maybe I'm, I'm cool with well, staying I like, here. Well, no, I still want to be an astronaut because mm -hmm. I, I got to, you know, work with astronauts, train them, and then we would go to all the launches and landings and all that. So right. it still was just burning the fire there. It was working pretty well. Um, but I did just like it a lot. I mean, even when I got selected, the guy who uh, gave me the phone call, of my, you know, that you're selected, was also my boss as the aircraft operation. So, you know, I got some good news and bad news, you know. <laughs> bad news, you no longer have this great job, but you're going to become an astronaut, so. <laughs> so, in terms of great days in your life, how does that, how does that day rank? Where you well, it's got pretty darn high, yeah. yeah. It was uh, definitely way up there, but it's not as good as actually going to space. Okay, so how many times have you, have you been in space? Three, exactly. three, three missions. Three missions, okay. Right. right. So how long does a mission typically like last? How right. long are you so two of the there? ones I did were on the shuttle and those mm -hmm. are two weeks long. Mm -hmm. we're to, they go up to build the space, the space space station. That's what we're doing on that. We bring a big piece on it, attach it, hook it all up, do a bunch of spacewalks, stuff like that, and then we come back. And the last one was on a Soyuz and that's about six months long. Soyuz. Okay. Right. It's a Russian rocket. Right. A Russian rocket. So what, what is, so when you're building the station on the Soyuz, you're up there, just, you're hanging out. What are you doing? Are you running tests? You're doing... Science is our main job, but then right. we also have to maintain the space station while we're up there. So I'd say like 50% of the time is science, 40% is maintaining the station and 10% working out. And is working out, right. Because right. bo uh, bone loss is something? Bone loss and muscle loss are huge. So we work out over two hours every day. Two hours every day. Okay, so what are some of the projects that maybe you tackled um, when you were up on the space station at the Soyuz? When you're spending that uh, Yeah, because we are living up there on the space right. station, right? Well, it's just many, you know, again, science experiments. There was over 300 going on while I was up there. And I probably worked on like 150 of them. 150 of them. Yeah, and so and that varies tremendously on how much you even work on them. And some of them, I'll set it up real quickly, and I, and I hook it up on a laptop in the ground control can run it for me mm -hmm. right or I'll have to do the whole experiment and it could be a quick one it could be one that takes multiple days or and there's many experiments where I am the guinea pig so I'll uh, another astronaut will come help me and they'll do like you know from ultrasounds to eye tests to all sorts of things on your own body gotcha, yeah, gotcha. We do a lot of that, so. so how did they go about selecting these things did you have a say in what's going Not up there really. or uh, so the, um, the only we have a say in is is what ones will volunteer to be a guinea pig on Okay. Besides that, we don't have a say in really much any of it. Interesting. Was there one that you just can recall that was like really cool going on up there? Uh, or? There were many of the cool. The one, one that I, when the, I guess kind of was fun to play with was there, we did combustion or fire. And so, and that Isn't was, that the one thing you're not supposed to do? Light a fire in space? Isn't that kind of like the we first? We had a box where you could light the fire in, keep it all safe. Uh, they but didn't was, just give you a big lighter no, and no, said, exactly. hey, what's, what's going on? <laughs> Even though that would have been fun. But no, they, they didn't uh, allow us to do that. But then we could then, you know, we could vary in a niche material. You'd vary like how much oxygen and all these kind of things. You could vary right. to see how well it burned. And the, it, things burn much differently in space. 
because here on Earth, as you get the flame goes up like this, you actually get an air current going around. Mm -hmm. right? the, the, you know, the hot air rises and the cold air comes underneath, and it keeps the flow. So you keep oxygen always into the flame to keep it mm -hmm. burning, right? Well, it doesn't happen in space. It becomes a ball, and then you got to figure out how does that uh, new level of oxygen uh, go back into it. And a lot of times it will put itself out because the oxygen will not be there. Yeah. So it ends up being like this little poof, poof going on. Just like when you put your hand over yeah, the top of really, the candle. Really, yeah. yeah, it's really kind of cool how it all works. And so it was fun just to play with that, yeah. So obviously, it sounds like a lot of cool stuff is going on. What's what's one of the things they don't tell you about space? One of the one of the lows, the stuff that you just, you're just like, this is, this sucks. You know, yeah, this is, yeah. This is not making it worth it. But there are some unglamorous parts of space, right. that's for sure. Right, okay. right, right. Uh, for me, I think one of the things was, was food was pretty bad. So that was, a, you know, six months up there and with bad food was not a great time. I ended up oh, losing man. 15 pounds in the first month and a half. So is it better or worse than the BRC? How, how bad are we talking <laughs> It's here? worse than yeah, that. It's yeah, yeah. worse than that. Okay, <laughs> man, maybe I really don't want to go. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, and I think I, I went into in a bad situation. The food, they send up way before you get there sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the food we had on board was uh, almost to the end of its shelf life, which is three years old. And so, yes. Wow, you're really not eating fresh stuff. Right, exactly. No, you're yeah. eating fresh stuff. And there was meat in there, supposedly. And uh, I mean, so we couldn't eat any of the beef at all because it was so hard. It just was, it was just, it just too old and mm. couldn't eat it. So we had lots of issues like that going on. And so I think if you got the food fresher, it would have been much better. Okay. But we just happened to work out that it wasn't that way for us. And so that was difficult. And then there's another aspect you got to think about in space, the uh, daily activities you would, you would do normally every day and, that, uh, and when everything floats that you deal with, like everything floats, yeah. right? You, if some things don't work out so well and are much messier than you would want them to be. Right. And so that's kind of a pain to do that. Eating, brushing teeth, whatever it yeah, may be. Yes, all the other aspects of that. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly. That's, that's the negative side of it. So I imagine you know, floating is probably a pretty unique and, and cool thing. Does the novelty ever wear off? No, Do you it never will. Well, for me, it never wore off. It never wore off. No, I loved it. It was you know, the best playground you could ever find in the world. <laughs> and I got to be, to be there all the time. So that's one thing you miss, and you'd always want to go back for that. What's the closest thing you've found to simulating that experience here? Like on Earth, where can I go to well, kind of get a little bit? You know, bit I haven't done it, but what I've watched, you know, the, I don't even know what they're called. There's, uh, but they kind of do the, the, uh, the, the I think almost I like call it like you know the skydiving, but it's in the the the, the like oh a, the wind turbine, a, yeah, wind turbine, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I think that would be the closest thing you could get to, but still, you have the you know the, the wind blowing on you. And that's the you know it's like either that or being in a pool, you know, because you can mm -hmm. kind of float in a pool, but you got so much drag with the water on it, you really just can't do it. You can't move that you, fast. You can't move yeah. that fast. So it's just it's hard. There's nothing really to make that same idea. I don't think so. It's, it's just a it's a unique feeling and it's a great thing to do. So you're coming down. You know, you, you're you're done with your missions. You you find yourself. What do I do next? Um, obviously, you're here at Boise State University. Um, what made that choice the next logical one? That's a good question. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I am done. And, and main, the main reason I was, I guess, wanted to move on was to leave Houston. Uh, it wasn't the that bad of a place. Well, for me, it was. <laughs> I, I grew up in the mountains of Colorado and I love the outdoors, you know, from backpacking and fishing, mountain biking, hiking, all these kind of things. Yeah. And there was none of that in Houston, right? And so, uh, from me and my family is every vacation was back to the Rockies, everyone, right? And so we were just, that was everything we did until right. we could get, get that again. And so family decision was, let's go back to the Rockies. So then it was like, where do we go in the Rockies? We start narrowing it down and Boise was high on the list. And then a good friend, Barbara Morgan was here. And she's also a former astronaut. Former correct. astronaut. Yep. So, yep. And, and, uh, and she'd been working here at Boise State, but she was getting ready to retire here. And so she, she set it up. She, she was much smarter than I was. And so she, ha, she kind of played me a little bit and, and got me to come here and give talks and all this kind of stuff. Got me to bring up the BSU you know, hat, mm -hmm. et cetera, all these things. And, and she knew exactly what she was doing. Because then, when, then uh, when I, after I came here like a second time, she just kind of, hey, you know, do you, li you know, you like it here? You have your family here. Why don't you just uh, you know, take my job, you know? <laughs> it's like, hadn't you thought of that? Just you do know? what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm going to retire here soon. And, and you, you know, and it was like, well, okay. You know, and I thought anything about it. Talk to the family, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And, and it, it was a good fit for us. We really liked the area. Uh, I like working with students. So, it worked so out what well. year is this for you on campus? Um, in my third year. You're in your third year. Right. Okay. What's kind of made it? worth it for you so far? Uh, I just like working with students on these the projects. The, the classes right. I teach are all project-based and it's really fun just to work uh, with them. It's, they come up with great ideas. It's fun to, you know, just to see their creativity, their, their you know, ingenuity, and, and just kind of help get that to grow. Right. You know, I just enjoy that. And so I know that you, you do projects for NASA, right? That's a part of your, your part classes. Of, yeah, the NASA puts out challenges in their education mm -hmm. uh, area and so we 
accept those challenges or do those challenges. And you know, one of the best things is it's a year-long thing, and then the students get to go to Houston to test out whatever they built. Okay, how are the projects going so far? Oh, they're going great. Yeah. yeah. This, two, this year we have two for NASA going on. Uh, one is a heads-up display for a spacesuit. We simulate that with a micro, as a Microsoft HoloLens. Okay. So it's augmented reality. And so the students are doing really well, and we leave in a week and a half for that down in oh. Houston. Uh, yeah, so they're, nice. they're, they're amazing, the students, too, because they are very well self-motivated. I mean, I don't have to do anything about motivation. I don't have to worry about, like, you know. You I mean, know, they want to do it, They right? want to do it. They volunteer for this kind of stuff, and they work hard. It's Because they, they see that, and they think, this could be my key to do what Steve yeah, does, right? Yeah, this exactly. is how I'm going to get into space. Or just get into NASA, or it's, it's a really cool, th you know, thing, too, right? Right. And uh, so that's a great one. And the other one is, right, this year we're building a end effector for a robotic arm that would go to we call the ocean worlds like mm -hmm. Europa, right? And so you know, think of it. A, a it has an ice covered, but there's water underneath the ice, and they would drill. Europa holes is a moon of Jupiter, uh, right? Yes, yeah, exactly, okay, right. And so, I'm, an, I'm an astronaut. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> well, honestly, that's so funny. I always ask people ask me those questions, and I'm like, I don't know. I never went there, so I don't have an <laughs> idea, you know. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, so, so, and that's a really, another cool project, and they're doing a really good job on that design, too. We don't go to, to the beginning of June. We go back, uh, to Houston on that one. Okay. Got it. So, w it's, it's something for an arm. What exactly does this... So, an effector. Basically, it's the fingers that grab. Oh, it's the fingers that grab. Right. Exactly. An effector. So how did building. I not how Yeah, did I not sorry. That's that a technical was. term, you know, engineering term. So, you know, an right. arm, you know... Do you guys build them with your effectors, or yes, do you guys... Exactly. Okay, got very it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> good <tips going. laughs> I know. I'm kind of funny. That's how I got the job. <laughs> Um, so it, it's, it's been a good time for you so far. What are, what are kind of some of your goals here you have on campus? Like, what are you trying to turn this, this program? Are you trying to get more projects going, more students Not involved? More. I just want to get them really consistent so mm -hmm. even if I left, they would still continue on, right? And, and I think it's really good. And I guess I'd also like to get more students getting internships at NASA and, and heading that way. How many, how many are at NASA right now from Boise State? Well, I know at least two for sure right now have jobs there. Oh, okay, uh, jobs. Right? And, and then internships-wise, I think we're up to five or something right now at internships, oh. right? Uh, I don't remember the exact number, honestly. Uh, but uh, so it's getting, it's growing, it's growing. That's what we're have trying you, to Have do. you specifically helped them with getting these? Well, I, I write the recommendation letters now. I don't know if that helps or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't give me, yeah. yeah right, you know, but I try to always do that for them. And it, having the experience on these projects, and when they get to go to Houston for this, they talk to the people who do the internships, and right. they get advice from them, and they get to know a bunch of the engineers there. And so that really helps, I think, on they're getting their applications accepted. And so, you know, maybe maybe for some of the the younger viewers, and we do we do have younger viewers that watch the show. What 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 is your what's your advice for them? They're young people. They're interested in STEM. Um, right. How are they getting started? What is what is the first right step they should take? What is that next right step they should take? Yeah. Well, I think you know, for working at NASA, you pretty much uh, need a science or engineering degree. Right. Right. Not now, not guaranteed because there's other jobs also at NASA. But if you want to get into that field, really on this, this space exploration operations, that's what you need. Uh, of course, it helps if you do well at it. Right. But so, and I always say to do well at it, find the one you like. Yeah. Because it's easy to do well when you like something. You don't have to work that hard at it. It's just, it, that's what happens. So, always, you know, search around and keep trying different ones until you find the one you really like to do. And then hang on to that one and just do that really, really well. And then also kind of do other things in life too. Just get, become more well rounded. Yeah. It really does well help. Well versed. Yeah, well yeah. versed, you know, from, from sports to music to reading books to doing adventurous stuff, whatever it happens to be you like to do. Again, things Hiking like in to the do. Rockies. Hiking in the Rocky, Rockies, whatever. Uh, do all those kind of things and, and that just kind of, NASA likes that kind of stuff. Well, good. I'm glad. Hey, Steve, I want to thank you for being on the show. We had a great time talking to you. Um, before we go to our next guest, um, we technically can't go up into space. Um, but what we can do is learn a little bit more about firefighters. And I wanted to take a look, you know, maybe what does a fire station look like? What are the things that go on there? I took a camera and one of my crewmen and we went and checked it out. Let's take a look. Char Jackson. And today we're going to be taking a tour of the fire station and learning just a little bit more about what goes on here. So this is kind of just the lobby, the welcome area right. where they stop and say hi. Okay, and I notice the building is green. It yeah, looks so like, we right? have our green building plaque okay. right out front. So that's very important. This building was built with with the carbon footprint in mind. Correct. Yep, yep. and um, that the city of Boise is very proud of that, and we're trying to uh, build with green in mind. Even in addition to that, I notice it's all very modern looking, even just inside the lobby, especially outside with with the artwork and the way that the the gates for the trucks look. It's all very new and. 
Right, this station was built with kind of a modern feel mm -hmm. in mind. It's not traditional like some of the other stations that you might see around right. the city, but this one's very modern. Yes, those doors, they don't open overhead, they open out, and we do have the artwork out front. So this is their dorms. Interesting. Just, yeah, they, it's kind of like, you know, BSU dorms, right? <laughs> it does look, it looks a lot like a dormitory. Yeah, it is. I'm I mean, noticing because it's like you don't have anything in it, just yeah. like a freshman has nothing in right, their dorms exactly. whatsoever, right? <laughs> well, and when then, they leave, you know, they take their stuff with them and then, you know. So well, this is kind of where they do their relaxing. And their workouts and Judge yep. Judy. Clearly, perfect. yes. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. So yeah, we, this is where they hang out. This is the kitchen, nice patio. Wow, so that's, they're seriously hooked up up here. Hi. Yeah, I kind of wish this was my kitchen. I know, this is a lot nicer than I get it. Like I know, house. right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this is pretty See, once again, probably nice. nicer than something you'd find at our college. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but clearly, it's very important for them to stay in shape. and Right. So. Be physically fit. It's kind of a priority, yeah. Yeah, I mean, only one plate. That's kind of concerning. I, I, I was working out earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a dog here? No. None of our stations have pets except for one of them has fish. One of them has fish. <laughs> that's uh, engine ten. Engine ten has the yes, fish. Yes, yeah, ten. That's right. They See, have... that's not very useful for a fire. You can't <laughs> stick a fish. I mean, they're in the water. That kind of defeats the purpose. I know, if right? You get water yeah. on the fire. And I think this is where turnouts are. So this is where all their gear is stored. Yep. Video you have the inside. Heck yeah. I've driven an engine before. That was pretty scary. But I, again, I was you like drove you. One of these? Yes, oh. I was like, if you get an opportunity to drive a fire engine, like you don't screw say that. no, yeah, right? Screw that, screw the pole. I want to drive. I know. I'm like, I'm terrified, truck. but like, I did it. It's very weird because look how far the tires are back, right? And yeah. you're up here, so. Oh, so when you're it's, turning, yes, you're thinking, it's yeah, really weird. Yeah, that. it's really weird. And it's obviously much, you know, smaller than a normal vehicle. So. <laughs> yeah, very tiny, so no big deal. <laughs> Luckily, we were out at the airport at like a practice course, like going okay, through cones. So you, so. Weren't, you weren't out here no, harming no. normal citizens. No, You're I didn't just, run okay. anyone over that day, so that was a good just day. Just that day. Number <laughs> eight, which one had the pole? Yeah. So we should have looked at four is what yeah, you're saying. See. Oh, man. Hey, wait. Oh, look, it does. It does I have lied. a pole. Good job. Hello. What See, the heck? I didn't know because I we would have went in the bay. We would have seen it. So See? do I have to be licensed to go down that thing? You think? I don't know. I mean, there's a paramedic here. Like I feel like you're. Do all... you think I could try it? I don't know. It's <laughs> right? the best environment. Don't tell anyone we did this. Okay, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> Just the viewers. Um, you have to say this now. I will not <laughs> sue Ada County. No, the Which city one? of Boise. The city of Boise will not, will not sue them. <laughs> Oh man, this is kind of like nerve wracking. No, just don't think about that. I think that's the key. Oh no, we just go for it. Oh no. I was kind of weird. <laughs> you don't not, really know how to grade, like how fast to go. Yeah, it's like that strong enough to bend thing, I think. Yeah. That I'm, looked I'm, good. I'm probably too heavy for it. Did it look professional? <laughs> Did I look like Yeah, a no, it was like, oh, that was good. Yeah. Please join me in welcoming firefighter Rich Brown. Rich, thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, so, you know, becoming a firefighter, you know, I had, I had friends growing up whose dads were firefighters. Uh, I think a lot of people get into it for, for a multitude of, of different reasons. W what was your reason um, or your path maybe for kind of getting into the profession? I think my, my path began, uh, I had a great friend that uh, was a a uh, hot truck crew member, mm -hmm. and then he went on to smoke jump um, and started jumping in Alaska. And so I, I knew him, and I was a pretty young kid, uh, and I thought that, that looks like a great profession. I can stay in really good shape. Mm -hmm. I can have adventures, uh, and I can fight fire, which I didn't know anything about at the right. time. So. so those are, I know neither of those two terms. Are those, are those fire, are they fire terms? Are so, they? Uh, smoke jumping in kay. hot truck crew. So yep. smoke jumpers, uh, they jump out of airplanes. They parachute in near the oh, fire. Oh, so you're talking about like forest they, fires. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so they do okay, that. got so it. I, this guy helped me uh, find sort of the avenue for me to get in a, as a wildland firefighter to begin with. And, and now, right. you know, all these years later, I'm a, a structured firefighter. So what was that first job? It was wild, wildland firefighter. Yeah, right? I, I worked for a small district on the Boise National Forest, not, mm -hmm. not too far out of town here. Um, it's it, right near where the new uh, East Junior High is at. But we, okay. we access the forest from there and then up the road towards uh, Lucky Peak. So 
uh, I started right. there, went to a hot truck crew, and then have made that transition to the structure department. So I know that that stuff kind of has seasons, right? You're not in it. Does. it. Okay. It so does. what did you do during your downtime? Uh, during my downtime, the, the first few years, I was mm -hmm. a student here at Boise State. Oh, okay. And so I would come back to school. Uh, I would attend school, and then I would go back as soon as I could get. I, as soon as I could get out of class, I'd rush back to it because I found that that was just. Were you my, seeking my a degree school. in fire uh, or something? I, I was. I was seeking a degree in uh, physical education. Physical and education. Calm. Oh. Communications. Okay. Yeah. And did you end up graduating with? No. Oh. <laughs> so you switched completely. I switched completely. What I ended up doing was I found that I really loved the job. Uh -huh. uh, I found my way onto a hot shot crew and uh, decided that I would figure out going back to school later on. So, so how, how many years have you been doing structured firefighting? Uh, structured firefighting, just about 24 years. My, mm -hmm. my anniversary is on May 1st. Happy anniversary, Thanks. by the way. Is that exciting? Uh, it is exciting. Mm -hmm. It is exciting. It feels like it's been a, a long path. So 24 years is, is an illustrious career. Um, what, are, what, are, what are some of the, the pros that you've gotten out of it? The stuff that's the cherries on the top, the things that you really love about it that make the job kind of worth it? I think that this job, the things that are those cherries on the top, mm -hmm. as you say, uh, it's really helping people. Mm -hmm. Helping people in your community, whether you know these people or not, it's being able to help them at their worst moment. And, and everybody can define their own worst moment. Um, but we are involved in a lot of emergency situations where we just go help people and right. you have to be able to get down to that human level. You have to do your job first, right. which takes the physicality and then you have to get down to the human level and just help people. And I imagine it's a double-edged sword in a lot of ways, right? It's got to be tough on, on yourself. Yeah. yeah. Does that is. get draining? And um, I, you know, through my career, I've had small incidents here and there that were, that were troublesome uh, and difficult to deal with. And it, it, it's difficult for everyone but mm -hmm. everybody deals with these things differently right and i think you being there in the position of the helping side has to be a lot of of why you keep going back right because yeah. you know what you're doing is is a good thing yeah right yeah. okay it's, it's nice to be able to help people even in a bad situation like their home was on fire right or they've been in a car wreck or they've had a heart attack mm -hmm. i mean there's just a number of different things that that we help with and so i know I think for every you know good moment and bad moment, there's got to be some some odd moments, right? Yeah, You're not yeah. out there fighting fires every time, no, right? No, we're not out there fighting fires every time. Sometimes you know you you get these you get these other calls that they may be really interesting where you're helping say another department in the city. You might be helping the police officers with with somebody that uh, you need to find them or you need to. Uh, search or we just have lots of interesting calls that we what's a what's a really particularly interesting um, call something off the top of your head I think you and I were talking earlier but it, it, I think there's just been a, a number of fascinating calls where you go on something and it's not anything that you think it is uh, I, I had a call that I often think of and I'm not sure why but I had a dog that um, stuck his head underneath the fence <laughs> and uh, we we got we were called by dispatch right we just drove out there non-code so we don't run our lights we don't run our sirens um, we went and and the the person that we were helping was a, a nice woman mm -hmm. who was very concerned because her poor dog's stuck underneath the She's fence yeah she doesn't know what's going on she can't help yeah and so um y you know we just we kind of trouble troubleshot what was going on the dog's not smart enough to lower its head yeah uh, so my captain distracted the dog i went into the backyard kind of give him give him a little yell, put on a pair of gloves, and grab the dog's legs very quickly, and, and we, we kind of worked together, just said, hey, right. I'm gonna rotate him the direction that he'll see it on the outside. Yeah. So, I, so kind of help him move his head. I rotated him and just let the dog go, and he shot off like he got shot out of a cannon. So almost that lampooned idea of you helping an old woman with a cat, or a, yes. in this case, a dog, right? Yes. That's, that's not yeah. entirely yeah. false. You guys are out there doing that um, a fair amount of times, or? You know, when people have what they deem as an emergency, they're gonna, yeah. they're gonna utilize the emergency system. They're gonna call 911, and we're gonna go. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go without question, and we're gonna try to help those people. Gotcha, and so, you know, Run me through what a, what a busy night is like so for a, a, a firefighter. A then. busy night? So yeah. I, I, spent, uh, I spent a year at one of our busiest houses, and that's, that's right in downtown Boise with Engine 5 and Truck 5. Um, I, Where is that for, for viewer so for it's, your reference? So it's right by Road Skate Park. So right, right underneath under the freeway. The, yeah, right mm -hmm. underneath the connector, right in downtown Got Boise it. as it 
as it starts to, to go uphill, um, people look right at look right down on the fire station as they're going outbound to the freeway. Gotcha. Um, I, so in a year of working at that firehouse, I had about three nights that I can recall where I slept. And I, I, I don't know why that's stuck with me. It's been about eight years since I worked in that firehouse right. um, on a full-time, uh, all-the-time basis for my station. I worked there last Sunday, and I mean, it was like we may have gotten to sleep for three hours. So you're sleeping not at all. So what time do you roll in at for your shift? Uh, so the first, on day one, we mm. show up. It, shift change, it depends on the fire station. So mm -hmm. each fire station may manipulate that change just a little bit. We technically start at 8 a.m. We're on the clock. Generally speaking, the firehouse that I'm at is we start at 7 a.m. Uh, 7 to 7.30 is when mm -hmm. we arrive. We, we usually don't show up later than 7.30 unless there's you're coming from another station to that station. Got it. Okay, so you're, you're rolling. How, how back-to-back -back is um, these incidents? Are you getting back and you're going? Is so the, the station that I'm at, it, it's, it's, a, it's a slower station. Right. Um, and it would be really uncharacteristic for us to run back to back to back to so back. So maybe calls. when you're at station five. And you're yeah, at so fives. Um, so I know I was talking to you about last Sunday. I, I, I worked, um, so we call mm -hmm. our two days on, we call it a tour. The tour before uh, I had worked at fives and the engine went out between I think 7 p.m. and about 12.30 at night and they had nine calls. So from seven to nine, they would go on a call and come back. They would go on a call and they would come back. Mm -hmm. And then at about nine o'clock, they left and didn't come back to the station until about 12.30, 12.45. They just, they left, they'd get done with one call and they'd go to another call. And then they'd go to another call and they'd go to another call. So for three and a half hours, they're just running call after call after call. Is it easier than it, than it sounds or is it? Um, I think that you, I think that we become conditioned Because it is two days on, it. four days off. It is. So you do have a, a fair amount of time to, yeah. to recuperate. Yeah. If, 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 so on your two days on, mm -hmm. on your 48 hours, if you have a rough night, you, you may try to catch a little extra sleep in the morning. Given that you know what your day two is like, you're going to be looking at your training calendar. You're mm -hmm. going to be looking at the station life, which means, hey, on, on a given day, we have certain tasks that we need to perform. Um, we work out an hour a day. We make breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks while we're there. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner at, at the, uh, the, the Times normal you're time. Times you're supposed to, right? Yeah, yeah, you may eat when you get a chance. You may jump in the engine and, and uh, eat something when you go to a training class. It, so, it's just part of the life. Of us. So you're back in school yeah. right now, as yeah. I understand. You're getting a degree in a master's in? Counseling. Okay, so how is that, what's, how's that factoring into fighting fires? Yeah, so. Talking to the fire to get them to not, go away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm seeking the feelings of the fire. Uh, <laughs> no, re really, Ben, uh, the counseling degree for me uh, has developed through I, I had a pretty bad accident on the fire department. Um, I was driving a 50,000-pound 50 50, fire engine, yeah. and I'm going to a call in, in downtown Boise about 1.30, 2.30 in the morning, and a very inebriated person on a motor scooter drove in front of me, and I hit them. Um, I, I literally thought that I had killed this person. Yeah, 50,000 um, tons. Yeah, 50,000-pound yeah, yeah, fire engine hits a person on a scooter. It's not a good thing. Um, pretty traumatic event. Um, I didn't want to drive my own vehicle. I didn't want to drive the fire engine. Right. Um, I sought out the peers in my own department to help me deal with that. And ultimately, I ended up going to a counselor several times mm -hmm. uh, and getting some help because I could not reconcile the incident, and I thought it was my fault. Although I knew I had a green light, I knew that this person ran a red light. Right. I knew this person was incredibly intoxicated. In the in the end, mm -hmm. they were. Uh, two times the, the legal limit. I mean, that was what came out in, in the wow. court paperwork. So, wow. um, but I couldn't reconcile that. That, that yeah. night and for probably, I don't know, three, four weeks, five weeks afterwards, I, was, I, I just couldn't reconcile that I'd nearly killed somebody. When my job is to, Safe. when our job is to help people, mm -hmm. our jobs, our entire So you're looking to people. become an avenue for people. I am, yeah. I am. That within your me, own force that are maybe run into these similar situations. Yeah, that, that led me to get on our peer team for our Boise firefighters in our Boise fire department. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I came to a, I don't know, I guess it's a sticking point for me where I, where I didn't feel like I 
knew enough and I wanted to know more. And I, I started doing some research and looking at the avenues that I could take. Um, my division chief of operations was amazing and helped me take as many classes as I could possibly take within the confines of peer, which is yeah. just like you and I are having a peer conversation one-on-one -on -one if you and I were both firefighters. Right. And I, I decided that I, I could just go back to school. So here, here I am at, at 50 yeah. working on a master's degree uh, to help with clinical mental health counseling. I don't know where it's going to lead me, Ben. I, I really don't know where it's going to lead me. I'd like to work with fire departments. I'd like to work with police, right. fire, EMS, military, people that have an exposure to those uh, traumatic situations. The, the average see if person I can does not have experience with yeah, yeah. We, we go on We go on so many of these different events. So it can be just one event after another. And you just never know if it's going to be one event that, mm -hmm. that changes things for you or bothers you or if it's a multitude of those events that build up over time you know I, I this is probably a bad example but you know when I have a friend who gets out of a relationship or something like that you know I, I have I want to have that tool to be able to help them there you know you're in this situation where you know your buddy on your team he's he's down for the count he just went to some you have that tool that's got to be it enough you don't know necessarily where it's going to take you but you have that opportunity to to talk to that individual yeah. right yeah yeah it, it's it's nice to have it's nice to have the training, and it's nice to have the support of the department mm -hmm. to uh, go through all those peer classes that are really a first responder level. Right. Um, and while I have a lot of support at the department, um, it's a lot of work to go back to school and try to hold down a full-time job. So, and it, it's, it's, but it's been fun. Good, I'm glad. And I know this isn't the only thing yeah. that you're working on right now. You, two weeks ago, right? Something like that, two or three weeks ago. Stair climbing yep. for... Uh, so we have a team from Boise Fire mm -hmm. that attends the uh, Leukemia Lymphoma Society Firefighter Stair Climb. Okay. Uh, it's the largest on-air firefighter competition in the world. So, so it's filmed, it's filmed on air. Uh, it's, it's, the competition is mm -hmm. on air in your full structural PPE, so personal protective oh, equipment. Got it. So we, we compete in, in climbing a 69 floor building mm -hmm. with about 55 pounds of gear. So it's about 1,300 and 56 steps, about 788 feet of elevation. What's, uh, how long does that take someone to complete? Um, the fastest firefighters are around 11 minutes, and the average is somewhere in the 20 to 25 minute range. Wow, how did yeah. how, you do this year? Uh, I was about 20, 21 minutes, okay. right in there, 20, 20 and a half, 20 and a quarter. One of your better years? or mm -hmm. No, not one of my better <laughs> years, no, no. I've been, I've been as fast as about 16, oh, 16, so you've been 45, okay. and that's not fast. Oh. That's not fast, Ben. <laughs> it's oh, not, yeah. I'm trying to give you a compliment no, here no, on the show. It's I'm okay. trying to help I'm, you out okay. here, Rich. So what's, yeah. so what's the reasoning behind this? Why are we, surely no one wants to just go run up a yeah. bunch of stairs, yeah. right? There's got to be a reason that yep. they're doing it. The physicality of our job mm -hmm. lends itself really well to us trying to do these crazy, you know, athletic events. Right. Um, but what this event really is all about is it's all about fundraising for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the key points that our team has done and that I've really pushed for uh, is that like my father-in-law survived a blood cancer. A buddy of mine didn't, and that really made me take a very harsh look at what I was doing. Was I just doing it to go climb the stairs and compete against right. 2,000 firefighters to see who's the fastest and best? Well, I obviously wasn't the best at climbing, so I said, I'm going to challenge myself to try to raise 100,000 bucks in my fallen friend's name. Mm -hmm. uh, my father-in-law's still alive and doing great. Mm -hmm. uh, he was diagnosed in 2002. And so the Leukemia Lymphoma Society has just been a big, uh, they've been a kind of a big factor in, in me deciding that I wanted to do something. I wanted to help outside of my profession. So how is fundraising going this year? Fundraising going pretty good. We're, we're somewhere uh, we're, we're somewhere close to ninety-two thousand okay. dollars as a team as Boise firefighters. The stair climb overall, all all two thousand firefighters were just about two point two point eight million dollars right mm -hmm. now, and I think I'm probably can 18, we can 18, we 000? can we still donate? Yeah, yeah, people can still donate. If when's when's to. the last day to get these? Uh, well, so they're on a fiscal cycle, so June twenty fifth. So we've uh, got plenty of yeah, time. Yeah, there's plenty of time. Yeah, okay, people looking to donate, we're going to put that in the link for the description. We're going to have Very that cool. for you guys. That way we can get the people cool. watching the show in cool. contact with it. Cool. Um, so you. this is something that you're really passionate about? Uh, incredibly passionate yeah. about. You know, losing a friend was a difficult thing because I had watched my father-in-law go through his mm -hmm. blood cancer and how 
incredibly debilitating it was for him to go through every single step uh, throughout that process. Chemotherapy, and so, all of it. Yeah, so when my buddy, his, his cancer, his blood cancer came back a third time and it just, it was devastatingly fast. Uh, he, he died so fast after it came back that third time. And I, I, I call it a light switch moment. I was like, I'm not good at climbing. Mm -hmm. What can I be good at? Fundraising. And the important part was the fundraising, yeah. So I decided that I'm, I'm just gonna do as much as I possibly can. So this is your, what year this is your? Uh, it's my ninth, yeah, it's my ninth year. This was yeah. my ninth year. Next you year don't see 10. yourself stopping? Uh, not, not until I retire and then I guess I could go do the civilian version, but I like, it sounds terrible and even thinking about, sounds cocky, but right. the civilian climb is easy. It's easy. 10 minutes is not a big deal. You're wearing a pair of sneakers, a pair of workout shorts and a workout shirt and you don't have 55 pounds of gear on that holds all that heat on and, and you don't have air on and you don't have a helmet on. Right. Um, it's just much easier, but it's the same principle. You're climbing that building yeah. because climbing that building and the pain that you're experiencing is nowhere nearly as bad as cancer treatment. It's not even like a blip on the radar when you start talking about cancer treatment. Well, Rich, I hope you don't stop anytime yeah. soon. Once again, we're gonna put that in the description for you. Hey, thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks, Ben. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in, my two guests, uh, and have a great night. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, you're gonna have